So I got some comments from the last video and there seems to be a little bit of confusion about the orientation of the hall sensor and the orientation of the magnet. And so um, I just want to do a quick video here to clear this up. Here is um, the hall sensor uh, and you can see that it's relatively flat. And so that is the part that I want to touch to the magnet to get my reading. Okay, so when I touch the North Pole, okay, the North is down. So I put a little ball bearing there so I can tell that that's the North Pole. So when I touch this face of the sensor to the North Pole of the magnet, I get a reading of minus 1.45. And now this is opposite from what I got yesterday in my video because I'm actually standing on the opposite side. So now um, when I take this and I touch it to the south pole of the magnet, I get a reading of minus 1.45. So I get the same reading by keeping the orientation. So here I'm touching one face to the magnet and here I'm touching the opposing face to the magnet and I'm getting the same reading. Now I'm going to turn my magnet around and now I'm going to, I didn't change the orientation of the magnet, okay, it's, this is pointing this way, my little, uh, my little tail there, so it's facing the same way. So now I'm going to touch the magnet, I turned it around, the magnet now north is facing away North is up here. So now I get a reading of 1.41 and 1.41 when I touch it to this side. Okay, so, um, so when you don't change the orientation of the Hall sensor, but you change the orientation of the magnet, then you get opposite readings. So now I'm going to turn around the Hall sensor. Okay, I'm going to turn it around and now this little tail is on the right and now north is facing down and when I touch the north pole I get a 1.41 on the north and on the south. And then when I turn it around I get the minus 1.44 and the minus 1.45 on this side. So, um, so basically what I'm saying is I can get a 1.45 reading on the magnet or if I rotate the magnet and I rotate the Hall sensor then I can go back to my 1.44 minus 1.44. So if you rotate them both, you get the same reading. Minus 1.44, minus 1.44, 45. Okay, if I only rotate one, I get the opposite reading. I get the positive 1.41, positive 1.41. But now when I turn the sensor around again, I go back to the minus 1.44 and minus 1.44. So it really, these readings are really, you know, dependent on the orientation of the sensor. So if I am oriented with my little tail facing away from me, I'm getting a 1.41, positive 1.41 reading on the south pole. And when I turn this around, I get a minus 1.45 reading. So um, it really, and on both sides. So when the front face, I'm going to call it the front face, when the front face is touching the magnet, I get minus 1.45. And now the back face of the hull sensor is touching the magnet and I get a reading of minus 1.45. So I get the same reading as long as I don't turn the Hall sensor. Then I'm going to get a different reading. So this obviously has nothing to do with the magnet and has everything to do 
with the hall sensor. Doo -doo -doo. So here's another point I want to make. Um, some people have asked me about this. Um, it doesn't really matter what size of magnet you use, you still get the same reading. All of the magnets I have, or the ones that I bought, are um, N42 Gauss, or whatever, N42 magnets, neodymium magnets. And so when I read, so this is a little sphere magnet that I painted black, and uh, not that that has anything to do with anything, but I was just trying to remove reflections from the ferrocell um, image. But anyway, so when I do a reading on the north pole of this magnet, I get a, you know, minus 1.43. If I go close to the magnet, I can get the, let me take that off so I can get closer now that I know where it is. I get the minus 1.45, which is the highest reading I get on these particular magnets. And so if I, you can see that the, um, this little flag here is pointing to the right, which means this is the orientation I get. Um, let's see which pole this is. Okay, so that's the north pole. So when my meter is oriented this way with the flag to the right and I touch it to the magnet, I get the minus 1.44, minus 1.45, um, depending on how accurately I touch it. There's minus, usually minus 1.45 is the biggest number I've seen. There it is. So I know that's my north pole. And then if I turn this around, which hopefully I can do without changing the orientation too much, and let's see, I know I'm looking for a plus 1.41 on the other side. There it is. So I know that's the south pole. Or I can rotate my device here, the Hall Effect Reader, and I will get the one, minus 1.45 reading. So it, it doesn't matter. This is like a tiny magnet. I can't get much smaller without not being able to show up in the video. So this is pretty small compared to the other sphere magnet that I use, and I got, I get, with all of my magnets, every single one I've tested, this one, the other spherical one, and all the ones in between have the same readings. And so um, the device itself is, 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 I believe, the reason for the difference between the 1.41 and the minus 1.45 readings that you see. It's the device. It's this guy is doing it because every single magnet that I looked at and all my magnets are N45 and 42 Gauss so um, all my magnets are the same right so you know it must be this guy that uh, is creating the difference and not the magnets I actually tested a really small magnet So I have this really tiny magnet. I had to put it into, it's right at the end here. And let's just have a look and see what kind of reading I can get off that. Because um, it should give me, eventually, it should give me the same reading. If it's an N42 Gauss, it might not be. But let's see what the maximum reading I can get on this. There's 1.38. I saw 1.38. So this is reading almost as high, if not exactly. I just have to go right to the center. Let's see if I can get a really... 1.36 I saw. You should be able to see it in the video if you scroll. 1.38. And I'm able to... 1.37. And I was able to stop it there. So even this tiny little magnet is measuring in the order of the... Because I know this is... An, and I know... I've seen the one point, minus 1.45 reading on this magnet, so I know it can do it. It's just you have to get the right orientation and you have to get the right spot. 
and this is a really tiny magnet. So even this tiny, tiny magnet gives the same readings basically as, um, okay, let's get the negative. So this side is positive and this side is negative. So it's doing the same thing as the other magnets and it's giving a reading almost exactly the same as the larger sphere magnet that I showed in my experiment. So I just want to make that point that even it's not the size of the magnet that makes a difference. The size of the magnet does not change the voltage reading on the surface. The surface currents, I guess you can say, are exactly the same no matter what size the magnet is. And the reason I really like that is because of the fractal paradigm because magnets are the epitome of self-similarity. Okay, magnets are self-similar. It doesn't matter what scale you're at. You, they're behaving very similarly and in this case exactly the same at different scales. So I thought you might find that interesting. I certainly find it interesting and uh, we'll see where this goes.